We've got the throttle cable connected, which works great. And what we're actually doing now is we're going after getting the um, uh, steering column out of the way because we have finally received our power steering box from Germany, not the UK. Not sure what happened there, but it certainly took longer than planned. Uh, a little over a month, about five weeks to get it. So what I've got to do is I've got to get the steering column out. So I've removed the steering wheel and I've removed all of the components that would prevent me from getting the column itself out. And I'm going to remove the entire item intact. So if I get these hoses for the air conditioning up and out of the way, and if I disconnect my <clears throat> brake reservoir, I'm going to be able to lift this enough out of the way to be able to pull the um, worm gear and manual steering assembly up out of the way and slide the shaft completely out. Of course, I do have to remove uh, some bolts appear in order to get that to slide out neatly. So we pick up very much where we left off <clears throat> last time with the exception of I've gone ahead and bought a two and a quarter <clears throat> inch aluminum pipe for the 45. I did not do a reducer here so I took a two and a quarter 90. I did a two and a quarter aluminum 45 pipe um, from siliconeairintakes.com and I had to cut about two and a half inches or so off the bottom of it to get the turn and then it actually lays like so quite nicely. So everything over here is uh, plumbed from regards to air intake and turbo. I'm going to go down and find a different hose that I can use to bring the radiator down to the engine. And at this point we are over here mapping out fuel supply and fuel return. And I'll need different fittings for those to come from the Series 3 into the 300 TDI. What I've also done, just got finished doing, is removing in its entirety the steering column and um, mechanism with the worm drive at the end of the shaft. I really didn't want to disassemble these. We've taken these apart before and just it's not necessary. This is worth something. Uh, so now I've got something that I actually can sell. And so we've set that off to the side. I'll be taking this bracket off and I'll be reusing this bracket here. Our goal will be to use the factory Series 3 steering wheel, but it's not a necessity. A Defender steering wheel will fit in here nicely. I have the linkage. I have the box from the UK that is my power steering box, and we are just cleaning this up now. I had to remove the brake um, pedestal in order to give myself enough room to get that out. Um, you can get this out. It is a, me a method of very, very carefully kind of an up and rotate and out and in and say that in reverse and that's kind of how it is to bring it out. But anyway, uh, we're going to bring a new steering column down now and start to figure out the fitting for the P38 power steering box that we're going to get onto here. <clears throat> so looking at our power steering plan, you can see I've got a P38 Range Rover steering box to a P38 <clears throat> linkage for the uh, I guess it'd be about the same as a P38, but it's a Range Rover Classic long wheelbase actually is what this is out of. Um, I had to abandon my linkage because actually the bushing and the rubber had totally routed away, so I got another one. <clears throat> but this is basically the setup of what we're going to do here. And if you can imagine that upright and the arm, the thumb facing forward, <clears throat> it's going to mount on the outside of the frame here. That's the big difference between the Defender and the Range Rover power steering box <clears throat> is that the P38 power steering box mounts to the outside. I don't have any room to put it here on the inside and it's going to basically the rounded part of the head is going to sit about like this very very close to my radiator as it sets but you can see the linkage and the column will come right on up in there. So I've got some modifications to do and some things to adjust to be able to get the column to slide up and in and I'll probably in using this going ahead and just using this column so that I've got my other column over here uh, that I can just market and sell on its own. I'm temporarily going to drive with this steering wheel and then I will uh, look for a way to get the uh, fabrication done on the top side for an original Series 3 steering wheel or a Defender steering wheel. But um, to keep the look as classic as possible like I like to do, I like to try to keep um, <clears throat> the modifications kind of hidden on the inside, not so obvious. So anyway, uh, here we go on getting ready for the install. Okay, so we've pulled the steering wheel off and the splines are slightly smaller 
uh, on the Range Rover shaft compared to what you need for the Series 3. So I will be temporarily putting the uh, Range Rover steering wheel back on here. But notice that this shaft is now separated from the lower. So we've got to do a couple things here. What that tells me is I could take the shaft out, modify here, and get the splines that I need on the top of it. That could be great. But I have no need for these ears. I can leave this and leave it as a possible way to mount, so I'm going to leave the bottom for right now. I've mounted these a couple of different ways in the past, and we're going to do this one, um, just kind of uh, decide what we want to do as we go. But I'm going to go ahead now with the grinder and take off these ears because they serve no purpose anymore for using this column from the donor Range Rover. Okay, so we've removed all the parts off of the uh, Range Rover steering column that we don't need, and uh, we'll go ahead and it just is going to slide right on up in here, like so, and a little difficult with one hand, but you can see I'm going to work that through, get the column through, pretty straightforward stuff, and then we'll use the <clears throat> brackets and mounting that we had originally to uh, get it all nicely stable. So we'll just double check that the radius for that hole is the same, you know, we don't have any problems there, but um, we'll get this in place. Probably would be better if we did something more like that. But I can see already that uh, I'm a little bit tight, so I'm going to go ahead and um, grind this radius out a little bit. And then we'll have to do the same thing for the brackets uh, right here. We'll make some adjustments to it as needed. But um, anyway, so I'm going to work on getting that up and in. And uh, so I'm putting the, the wing up. back on and getting it to where we've essentially got where this will be. I just got the one. Uh, bolt in up top here, but it's crude enough in its placement that I know that it's not going to be any further forward backwards, further forward or backwards than what you're seeing right here. So what I can do is I can take my Sharpie and I can say that's my absolute and this is going to be inside of the wall, so you, you know the the grill is about that thick uh, for the radiator panel, and it'd be great if I could just be inside of that. So that's my absolute, and this is my um, my other line is going to be just where I'd like to be. If I have to push it all the way to the absolute, I know I can. I'll just have to make a little modification to the grill to do that. And what's going to happen here is right now I've just got the very very rusted. Uh, um, uh, splash guard just laying in here, but I've also got the um, power steering box the P38 down in here. And uh, what'll happen is the wall of the uh, fender is going to have to be cut out to accommodate this. Now I might not have to do that this time. Um, however, no, I know I will because, as you know, I'm going to try to get as close as I can to the radiator, and that means that the wall of the a power steering box is going to come inside. So there will actually be a cut in the fender to accommodate, not, not on the outside, excuse me, but on the inside, we'll be cutting that to accommodate how the uh, power steering box wants to fit. Um, if I look through here, we can see that there is the end of the power steering box, and there is my preferred uh, arrow right there and my absolute arrow. So I definitely have got to get the steering wheel up more into the cab and if that's not going to be enough then the steering uh, column is going to have to be uh, the shaft is going to have to be cut down a little bit um, but just to look at what we accomplished and how clean this is up in here um, we got the manual uh, assembly out we got the start of the shaft for the automatic power or excuse me for the power steering in um, and you can see here we've we've as we mentioned earlier, we've got ourselves the ability to start thinking about how clean this is going to come together on the inside. So um, we'll be working on a bracket that we have to make for the air intake. And then we're really kind of getting to a point where we're getting close. We'll be making electrical connections, um, wires such as this that go to the fuel filter. I'm sorry, they go to the oil filter that was about here on the J10. Now it's up a little further. If it doesn't reach, we got to extend that, so on and so forth. I've got those kind of connections to make the um, glow plugs, the alternator, um, the choke that was on the J10 that I don't need, the booster 
uh, plug that for the vacuum system. Um, it, there is no brake booster on this assembly. If I did go ahead and add one, then of course that could be added. But um, there's a few things here that we still have to modify and make adjustments to. But um, we are able to kind of get tidied up here a little bit. Uh, I am going to finally torque down the head. Those two cylinder head bolts are not as tight as they should be. And so I'll get those tightened up just so I don't forget to do that as we then move on to our next step. So now that we've made our marks here, we know that we've got to get the power steering box moved back about an inch or two, which is which is great because it's not a whole lot. I don't want to take it out here. I don't want to try to see if that would barely do it because this is supposed to slide back in order to allow you to remove this piece uh, without having to take everything else out of the truck. So this is going to be basically, you know, bolted in and kind of permanently mounted to the truck, so to speak. This shaft, if ever needed to be removed, should have that play in order to slide it back and get it off of the splines here. So I don't want to take it out there. I've washed my hands a little bit and let's get into the cab here just to show that I think we're going to be totally fine on our ability to bring the steering wheel back. A couple nice things will happen is right now it's kind of forward and if I can bring it two inches to me or three inches to me it's actually going to get it further away from my legs uh, because it's at an angle it'll come up and out. So that's actually kind of cool. So we're going to get to work on shoving this back a little bit and I think we're going to be just fine with that two inches and um, not have to make any modifications to the length of the steering shaft itself in any way. So we'll get that going now. Well we found a nice compromise in the distance from the dashboard and the distance into you know my lap for the steering wheel and it actually got it up away from my legs which was nice and it's not too terribly close which is great it's, it feels very natural um, the if you recall earlier this piece was all the way down to here and what that's done is it's putting the nipple when I have all of this laid out it's putting it just basically like right there so just a smidge in which is great it's the best compromise um, I should show that the way that I'm doing this bracket is that I'm getting the outside bolt started or the inside bolt started and then once I have it started I then come over here with some vice grips and I'm squeezing this. The interesting thing about the Range Rover um, webbing here on the outside of the steering column is that it is spongy. If you hammer on this or move on this it will collapse on you a little bit. What I've been doing along the way is checking to make sure I'm not rubbing. You can see right there I'm a little close and the good news is I can get a screwdriver in right there and I can pry that out and that's the only place where I'm close. I'm not actually officially hitting but I am everything but hitting. So anyway, um, the vise is now tight. Uh, I can now back this off and I can put the bolt in and then of course I'll get the other bolt back in. Certainly there's other ways to do this and it gives me the opportunity as well to then come up with a way of how I'm going to attach this down here to give me two points to make sure this column is nice and sturdy to the hand when driving. But um, it is definitely something where I could fab this a little differently, but this is working. So this is what well, I'm going to That's up do. and in. We've got the um, little shroud here. We'll just cut that back so it's a, a better length to fit now because it's a little too long. And the one thing that will definitely have to happen is I think we're going to rub on this um, bulkhead stay, which is actually a really easy solution. We just come in here, I've done this on other ones, we'll just come in here and grind down, take off this corner and make it to where there's just no conflict there. Um, I did double check, if you look up in here, I did pry that back out. I've got lots of clearance now. The steering wheel wants to turn really cleanly, no rubbing. I've laid this essentially where it will be on its vertical axis and if you look here you'll notice that I am in a not too bad compromise. I'm well inside the absolute. I'm a little bit over what I'd like to be to just fit. So I'll just have to make a slight modification to the radiator grill at the bottom. We'll just nibble out a little bit. We're already gonna have to do that to the fender a bit, but um, anyway, coming to a good stopping point for the day. Uh, we'll just tidy this stuff back up a little bit and tuck it back in where it goes and um, put the fender back on and call it a day for today. Um, certainly, as I've mentioned already, um, mucho electrical <laughs> to finalize and, um, you know, power steering, uh, connection here. We might have to do a slightly different one for this, but I think we're going to be okay. Uh, this power steering is awfully close to the, um, belts down there. 
but uh, we will play with that a little bit. And if we have to tweak or modify it, it actually connects one of them in here, of course. So anyway, uh, we're going to clean it up, take one last little video of it all nightly kind of buttoned up of what we accomplished, and we'll call it a day for okay. the day. Well, where we sit now is I've got the, as we mentioned in the last video, I've got the lower part of the uh, front radiator bulkhead uh, to weld, to cut the upper and get the rotten off and attach the lower with weld, bondo, sanding, and paint. Uh, that's really the the best way to do that seam um, is to get that going, at least the way I'm going to do it. Everything is looking nice and clean. I'm going to take this off and go find a hose uh, from the auto parts store that will work here. And we get our first chance to just see how clean this is going to look. Of course, the choke cable, uh, as well as I think this is actually this is one choke cable, and then I got to figure out what this one is. <clears throat> but uh, we now have those sorted out, and roughly you can see how everything's going to line out. The air filter box I'm intending to put on a bracket right up in here. And, but I'm still doing so much work down in there, I don't really want to clutter that up. So um, as we just kind of wrap, do a quick little walk around, we see I've got the power steering box laid in here for now. I know I have to make that cut over there. I've got the uh, shaft shoved up into its final location. The bracket on this wire for this circuit for, I think this is the horn. Yep, it has to be... Um, run and then I know that I have this connected to the positive terminal and battery I have to figure out what it is but uh, easy enough just to find the other half of the positive terminal and connect it uh, look this truck is getting as proof of concept back to running once it's running and running smoothly we're gonna come in we're gonna go after dings we're gonna go after rust we're gonna go after bulkhead and if we get up here in the cab I went ahead and put the steering column back together and man, I can't wait to have uh, cruise control. I mean, wow, right? And maybe I should put the airbag back on and then I've got cruise control and an airbag on my Series 3. I pray you th you know I'm kidding. Um, but it would be kind of funny to have uh, that there for a while until I decide exactly what steering wheel I'm going to do. I am ever so slightly crooked. I'm a little bit of a stickler for that. But the column needs to be straightened out anyways. Once I make that cut on the bulkhead stay, that will be taken care of. So we're going to clean up, call it a night for real, after having done that before in this video, um, and uh, butt it up and call it good.